Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah, church. Yeah. Out of the mouths of babes and children, he has ordained praise out of the rocks, out of the trees, out of, out of the moon, the sun, the stars, all of creation says yes, hallelujah. He is the risen king. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords and none compares to him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We, we are not just a religion. We are not a club, we are not a social organization. We, we serve, we live for, we carry the life of the risen King of Kings. You may take your seats please. Yeah. Oh man, I'm charged, I'm pumped, I'm pumped. I just feel like exploding right now, church. And how great is, is, is our worship team. Let's give a hand to the worship team. What an amazing job they're doing. All right, let me, let me share before, uh, before I don't share and I just start screaming again, amen? Our brother Damien read from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3 to 5. And he shared about how in his own personal life he watched as Jesus defeated death and brought life out of the grave. And I want to continue with that thought and read from Ephesians chapter 2, same chapter, and just continue from verse 6 to 10. And talk about the ways in which the victory of Jesus was not just 2,000 years ago. It's for today. It's for now. It's for you. It's for me. Amen? And as I read, whenever we come across with Christ or with him or in Christ, I want you to shout it with me. Amen? All right, let's read. Ephesians 2, 6 to 10. It says, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's masterpiece. Tell somebody I'm God's masterpiece. We are created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. What a passage. And this week I was just meditating on this passage and talking to Jesus and saying, what do you mean I was with you? And what do you mean I'm in you? And I was sent back to some experiences that I hope other people in the room are familiar with. Is there anybody in this room who has played in a sporting team, in a game, in a match? <laughs> Not only that, but both you and everybody else on your team, you sucked. Show of hands. Be bold. Show of hands. Yep, yep, yep. And you finish that match, you finish that game, and your parents said, son, daughter, you did great, but you know, you know that you sucked. And every once in a while, we long for that superstar player. 
We long for that one person who is exceptionally good at that sport. That one person who makes all the difference. That one person who can, can, can make up for all the failures and all the flaws and all the inabilities of everybody else on that team. Well, I remember there was one particular time when I both sucked and I was also the star player. <laughs> Let me tell you that story very quickly. Several years ago, in Ghana, our denomination organized a church camp, a competition for churches all across the country, and we're split into teams. And over three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're competing. And my team, when we played soccer or football, we sucked. When we, we, we run athletics, we sucked. Even at board games. I am humiliated. I'm embarrassed to say this. We sucked even at board games. Tell somebody, but on Sunday. Say it with confidence, but on Sunday. They organized a Bible quiz. And they said, look, this is a church camp, so we're going to multiply the points of any team that wins this quiz. And I looked up to heaven and I said, Jesus, we have sucked at everything, but not your word, Jesus. And I answered every single question thrown at our team. And I stole the questions of other teams as well and answered those ones too. And to my shock, when we were done, they counted up the points. And the team that sucked at everything else, just because of one swoop of the hand of God through the Bible, we were crowned the winners of the entire tournament. Just imagine that with me. Something so earthly, something so mundane as a competition, as sports. Each and every one of us, I believe, know what it feels like to suck at life, to be overwhelmed, to be tired, to want to give up and throw in the towel because each and every time you try and you try again and you try again and you keep failing. But this passage tells us that 2,000 years ago, the greatest of all time, the captain of our salvation, the author and the finisher of our faith, the alpha and the omega, the bright morning star, the king of kings, the Bible tells us that he stepped into our world and decided that we would be included in his team if we include him in ours. And the Bible tells us that when Jesus hung upon the cross and said it is finished, we were with him and we were in him. And on the third day when he came back to life in that empty dark grave, we were with him and we were in him. And when his command caused that heavy stone to be rolled away, and he walked out of that tomb. We were with him and we were in him. Come on church. The Bible says that now he is seated in heaven far above all principality, all power. He is victorious. He has conquered and we are with him and we are in him. please take your seat still I'm not done yet and we've sang amazing songs and we've listened to historical facts proof from the scriptures as well as the testimony of people in times past 
that indeed the grave is empty. And we have heard that even today, there are men and women who can shout and say that in my life he has defeated death. But maybe you are in this room and you've never really felt that Jesus is winning for you. And you feel like you are doing life alone. And you constantly feel like you are carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders alone. And this is your opportunity to just lift your hands and say, Jesus, take over. Be my king. Be my captain. Be my star player. If we could all just bow our heads and close our eyes. And the passage in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says that it is by grace that we have been saved. It is not of works. It is not of our own effort. It's not anything that we can take credit for. It is a gift from God. It's a gift from God. And you're here and you just want to say, Lord, I am tired. I am exhausted of struggling with my own strength and I surrender to you. I would just love you to lift your hands high in this private moment. I see that hand. God bless you. I see those hands. God bless you. Keep lifting your hands. God bless you. God bless you. Every head is bowed and every eye is closed and I want you to pray. Those hands are lifted and we are praying with you and there are leaders watching over you, praying with you and they will be encouraging you after the service. And I want all of us to join these hands as we pray together. Say with me, say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I am exhausted from doing life on my own. From today, I invite you into my life, into my heart. Be my savior. Be my Lord, be my master, be my king in Jesus' name. Could you please stand on your feet with me? Those of you who have just said that prayer, right now, he has stepped into your life and his victory has become yours. But the truth of the matter is that even after he steps into your life, he doesn't take you out of the battle. He doesn't cause the battles to stop. And for many of us standing in this room, maybe your battle right now is a battle of depression and mental health challenges. And King Jesus says to you, that I am replacing the spirit of heaviness with the garment of praise. And maybe you're in this room and your battle is with broken relationships, with hurt, your heart has been crushed over and over again. And King Jesus says, I've been anointed to heal the brokenhearted. Or maybe your battle is with addiction and sin and the constant guilt that you carry that you will never be good enough and King Jesus says I came to set the captive free whatever your battle whatever your torment whatever you're carrying whatever it is he is the resurrection and the life he has defeated every sickness every disease every mountain, every challenge, every storm, every thorn. He has broken the power of sin and the grave and his victory is your victory. And before him, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bow and every tongue confesses that Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. And as we enter this time of worship, I just want you to begin to put and place those battles. 
put every burden at the feet of Jesus right now you are seated with him you are seated with him in victory God bless you